So the Sinks versus Incel War, which is not about a, a punch up in the bathroom, it's uh, it's a new acronym, which I think we're going to enjoy. It's about involuntary childlessness, which we didn't really have like a, a catchy term for. You got incels for involuntary celibate, of course. Uh, sinks, it doesn't mean directly involuntary, but we'll get to it. We'll start off just with the Cultural Revolution Book Club on Lurses.com or something to remote, because the whole point here was that children were told lies and went out and ensured their future would be full of suffering. And we're seeing the same thing happen in the West. We'll start off with just the fact that, well, incels, very well known in the West, pretty normal. The left-wing response to this is to declare them all terrorists, which, um... <laughs> that, it, Men who can't get laid, we best make that illegal. That's That's terrorism now. Okay, that was retarded, but got, whatever. I should probably get on the phone to a few friends. They're in trouble. They're in deep, deep trouble. But that's that's you know really a, a male thing. Like sure, there are female incels, but when you look at the incel world, it's predominantly male, and therefore it's uh, become sort of a meme as well to insult men whenever you want to call them incels. Right? It's a great insult. Works. But there's not really something as catchy for something similar on the female side of the equation, and the female side of the equation is obviously. As, as people have pointed out, women have ac control access to sex, men control access to relationships. So if the thing here of the incels is the men being denied access to sex, they can't get that. It's because the women are not giving it to them, rightfully, because they don't want to have sex with them, so whatever. But then you get to the point of, well, what if the women are denied access to relationships? And the ultimate form of relationship here being uh, kids, of course, which is where the sink comes in. And the family is literally our biological impulse. Single income, no kids is what it stands for. Ah, okay. But we'll move to just quickly to enjoy the fact that modern women, the normie women out there, are, are just believers of all sorts of lies. Uh, this is just a most recent funny example, and I thought we'd enjoy ourselves with this one, where not only will they believe these lies, but then uncritically promote such it lies. It has been a long time since I've seen an Omegle clip. Yeah. My let's, God. Let's check out the average Omegle user. Let's play that. Eight pictures of people out of ten. All right, so there's this guy first. Oh my god, he's negative flashing. one million. Okay, what about this girl? She's a ten. She's pretty. She's, she's a ten out of ten. All right, what about this girl? I think he's a five. All right, what about this girl? <laughs> she's a seven. She's a seven. What about this girl? Uh, she's a five. He's a three. Wait, so this guy's a three, but this girl is a ten? Yes, yeah. she's literally gorgeous. What do you mean? She's majestic. But she's yeah, obese like though. What she is. I know you're not talking looking like a whole fucking hummy dumpty. Do you think I'm fat? Yes, you fucking look like it. Oh, baby. Where, where's I that fat? Like, like, where's that fat at? I'm not body shaming. Isn't it a fact that she's obese? She's not obese. She's gorgeous. What do you mean? She's literally more gorgeous than yeah, you. Exactly. But isn't it a fact that she's obese, though? Yeah, but she's gorgeous. Okay, it doesn't matter if she's over, like, <laughs> big. She's literally gorgeous. Why are you, like, pointing out the fact that she's fat? Literally, no one cares. I don't care. She's literally gorgeous. Because it isn't fat unattractive? We pointing out. No. No? Then why did you rate this fat guy negative 10? Because... Oh my god, just shut the f*** up, you little white head sharing. <laughs> <laughs> it... So your first segment was women logic <laughs> in action. Second segment just picking right back up. My point being, just to remind people that, yes, normally women uh, believe all kinds of lies. It's, it's not uncommon. It's it's perfectly... Obvious. <laughs> and that was Thank brilliant. You. I, I think that some some women do genuinely like look at a woman like that and they just see confidence and they think beautiful. Yeah, and and these kind of normie women who just believe things because they're told them and go along with the group and are being particularly normal for women. I, I think the disagreeableness is a great way of measuring that, as Jordan Peterson always says, the difference in disagreeableness between men and women. Great argument about why women and democracy don't mix, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> We're going to go to Jordan Peterson, in fact, because he did this video that sparked my interest in the sinks. It's uh, titled The Epidemic That Dare Not Speak Its Name, and it's an interview with a guy who's a demographer, and his speciality is looking at involuntary childlessness. At least that's his main field for this conversation and the movie he's made about it. So he does this, and you do it apparently by measuring women who are around 40 and seeing if they have kids and wanted to have kids, and then... You do the data from there. And some interesting facts, just first off, because I think it's cool. About 5% of women the world over, regardless of which country or culture, don't want kids and will never have them. It's just a, a constant, apparently. You can find throughout time as well. Mm -hmm. It's not changed. And about 6% of women want to have more than four kids and will probably go on and have them. And the interesting thing about both those statistics is those two groups, when you measure them, haven't changed a dot. Not really? Not and yet, we have so much more involuntary childlessness from women reaching around about that age. And of course, well, it's not those two groups then. It's it's not a huge bump in women. 
you don't want to have any kids. That percentage exists, but it's it's not significant. You know, it's about five percent. Instead, the thing he found from his data is that the rate of women who are having about one kid, you know, want to have maybe one kid, maybe two kids, they've just completely dropped off. It's that group that's dropped off. So you now have about 30% involuntary childlessness. 30%? Yeah, in many countries around the world. I mean, the, the primary ones he's dealing with, uh, uh, I believe it's, what is it? Japan, I, Italy, South Korea, Spain. I imagine Germany, the UK. suggestion here isn't that they have necessarily decided that they don't want kids for their entire life, just that they thought that they could put it off? Yeah, and it didn't happen. And that's, and that's too late. <laughs> and that rate jumps every single year significantly. Uh, from his data. One of the things that people counter-argue is like, well, maybe they're just delaying because they'll have kids when they're a bit older, these these women, because when you start looking at 20 and it's not happening, it doesn't happen, is the data. Um, women who put it off in the 20s and whatnot, uh, sure, there's some that have it later in life, don't get me wrong, but the, the average is, is just not working. I mean, out. we've covered so yeah. many times, again and again and again, the, the uh, yeah. later you put it off, just the more difficult it gets. So, But we never really had a, a term for this, the involuntary childlessness, and, and it's one of the things they both actually speak of in the interview where they're like, maybe we should have a term for this. Well, it's it's very similar to the incels for men, as Peterson also figures out. Enter sinks. Sinks of into the room. Single income, no kids is what it stands for. And you might think, well, that doesn't really encompass entirely what you're speaking of. But when you look it up, you don't find any men complaining about being single income, no kids. I found one on TikTok. That was it. One dude. How old was the guy as well? He was like thirty something. Oh well, he's got time then. But it's it's just like okay, so it's it's basically women. And every single person I saw talking about themselves as sinks were all in their over thirties at least. So there's that. And and um, were they all very salty about it? This is the life I chose. This is the life I definitely wanted. It's a really weird subculture, and of course there are some single income no kids who want that about five percent. Well, we we've already about. covered. Well, five percent don't want kids. Whether they not they they don't want a husband is a there's a minor, minor percentage yeah, of what that is. That's a good point, actually. But the, uh, the sinks are, are interesting, to say the least. And I've, I've brought it here to show everyone at my show-and-tell lecture. Hello. Let's, uh, let's enjoy the first one, in which a, a local sink starts whining about how everything costs money. Millennial women in their 30s living alone are living a different life to everyone else, and I'm going to tell you why. We've got no one to go out with. We're waiting for everyone's kids to get old enough so that our friends can go out again. Many of us have had to move away from the places and the people that we know because we couldn't afford to have, to rent or to own where we knew people on a single income. Going on holiday is kind of weird because some people are totally fine doing it on their own. I am, but I don't want to do it on my own all the time. Plus the fact that it's very expensive. You're not surrounded by like-minded um, people who are in your lived experience. Like, I know some people who are in couples who don't have kids, but I don't interact with on a regular basis people who are living on their own, working and don't have kids and are my age. So there's no one to really talk to, anyone relatable anyway. Dating's pretty shit as well. I think a lot of us have grown tired of dating apps and so we don't want to use them anymore. It actually, when you reflect, it actually makes your mental health quite bad. And changes in how many of us work now means that we work from home, which is great financially. It's just not so great socially. So when you finish your day, there is no one to talk to. And because your friends have got young kids, you rarely find that you're able to just like pick up the phone and be able to speak to people, or you feel like you can't. There's a stigma from other people that is very, very obvious of what they think about you. And even though a lot of us will admit to potentially being lonely at times, we're not like that all the time. But people, and you can feel this, sometimes they don't even need to say it, but you can feel that people are like, oh, poor her living on her own. And yeah, do you know when I do want sympathy? I want sympathy in people recognising that for everything that goes wrong in my flat, for the times for, that I want to go away, times when I need to buy furniture and buy stuff, I'm paying for it all myself. We don't <laughs> split anything in our lives. <laughs> and there are certain utility <laughs> that bills it? that aren't dependent on usage and they could be split. But I don't we have don't. a man to so help that's me reach the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really <laughs> where that went? I felt <laughs> genuine sympathy for that oh, woman God. for 90% of that, and bam, right at the end, yeah. she got me, yeah, right yeah. in the gut. I just, it, it's obvious why most sinks are, are women, because no man would ever complain about, what do you mean I have to pay for everything myself? That's just normal. <laughs> 
Obviously, that's just normal. That's my entire life. I love that. I just love that. She's just like, why is no one paying for it? Yeah. Yeah. She, okay. Like, if, she okay. buy, if she's buying furniture, is she complaining? <laughs> I have to put it together myself. Yeah, she's, she's got to do that. I have to no bring one, the sofa up no the stairs shovels, by myself. Shovels the snow. Oh, it's little old you again. Oh, oh. Who, who could have seen this coming? I just... But it's true. She's not wrong. She's she's actually not wrong. I, I agree with her that her life um, would uh, be better off, uh, in which she would not be a sink. I mean, that, she is a sink. That last ten percent of that video was just pure cope. Well, that last ten is really just a, a window into the 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 unfairness in the system that we that should be there because of how men and women are different. But our entire society tries to tell us that men and women are the same. Blah blah blah. And it's just like, it's not true. Everyone knows it's not true. As well, you, you know it's not true. Being a 30-something sink who sat there like, ugh, I have to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's that's not, not the case. But she's, she's you know, there's, there's something there. I do like, she talks about the lived experience of being a sink and then there's no one to talk to. Uh, she goes on in a, a follow-up video where she mentions that she's managed to get in contact with loads of other sinks over TikTok and now she doesn't feel so weird. The thing is... <laughs> I've I, just got in my head, you know Hitchhiker's Guys of the Galaxy where they all turn into furniture briefly? I'm just imagining just loads of talking <laughs> sinks. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I mean, the thing about the internet is no matter how weird and messed up you are, there will be some community started over that weird and messed up thing that will make you suddenly feel normal and like, oh, this is normal. I should be like this. That is my f the favorite version of that is someone writing about if someone started talking about how they like having sex with toasters, you know, in the 90s, everyone would be like, what the hell's wrong with you? They'd probably stop having sex with toasters. Whereas in the 2010s, there'd probably be like some subreddit about having sex with toasters. Oh, you're absolutely right. People fighting right, over aren't different you? models of toaster and <laughs> <laughs> the modern world. <laughs> This one gets both sides just right. <laughs> it's, it's true, though. <laughs> Callum runs that subreddit. I don't know if that subreddit's real, but I know that green text is real. It so. certainly will be. There's other sinks who spent their time whining about tax unfairness. Um, one woman was talking about, oh my god, I don't get a tax break, unlike married women. Well, they, they've actually embraced it. Like the incels, they've embraced the sink label. Yeah. They're, can they're... we start talking about sinks? This salty, is... salty sinks. I can already see... <laughs> A sink lobbying group for <laughs> government benefits and handouts. Yeah, I, I don't think the sinks. Are I be can't pay terrorists. my whole bills. You have to pay my whole bill, taxpayer. Yeah, uh, she just dances. There's no point playing these, John, because it's, it's just <laughs> it's TikTok. Of it's, course, she it, just dances. It's women, so like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, she's probably a nurse as well. Sorry to be rude, but I mean, really, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to take that back. How many goddamn Instagram or female TikToks there are, and you check them out every time, it's just women dancing, and I'm just like. You're not even good at dancing. Stop doing it. Be interesting instead, for Christ's sake. Hold on the conversation. We'll go to another sink here. This sink is the funniest one. She complains because she works for the city in uh, making sure that people don't end up homeless. She's complaining in here that people with children have priority for homeless prevention. Obviously. Whereas sinks, don't you know I'm a woman? It's like, yeah. yeah but there are children. Yeah, nah, love. Because the whole thing about why do we give privileges to women in society... It's what can they, women provide? They've got this freaking miracle machine, frankly. I mean, like, having weird different organs that can birth children is <laughs> something we don't give enough credit to think That's about for a minute. That's the most you way of describing... Well, like, what the hell is that? Female you could, you can make a child? <laughs> You've got weird <laughs> other organs. Ugh. No, but it's amazing. It's, it's, it's like you're, you're playing some, like, you know, pay-to-win character, frankly. In a video game. <laughs> and it's madness. They got the early release DLC. Yeah, they got the DLC. And of course, okay, well, they get privileged status. They can literally make kids. That's amazing. And um, no, the, that's that's why as a society in most circumstances, you know, also that the weaker so they can't fight off, you know, men with guns and whatnot. So you give them privileges in life, right? And that's fine. That's that's actually proper. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. But the funniness in all of this is you get local woman who believes she should have privileges as a, and she sat there as a sink going, hang on a minute, why do people with kids get priority? Not me. I'm a woman, aren't I? <laughs> Big brain. Yeah, but I mean, you're a sink. So, <laughs> there's, there's that. That's such a dismissive insult This now. is what I love about you're it. You're a sink. Look, incel is fantastic. I get it. It's a great insult. It works perfectly on every level. Hurts men at their being because, I mean, that is something that men are looking for and can't get from women. It's something women control access to. Yeah, well, guess what? <laughs> sink. <laughs> and then they'll have to ask you what you mean. But that's the thing. And you it's... get the joy of explaining how much of a failure they are. Well, it's, it's not really even like... Uh, uh, it's, well... There is a bit of joy uh, I, in it. Don't okay, lie. I can't. I can't. I mean, look at the glee on your face as we've been going through this. But it is funny. 
it's it's <laughs> funny to watch people get some comeuppance. And uh, we'll go to the next one here because uh, other sinks have started to notice something. This one's really sad, and it, it happens to everyone, not just sinks. But this sink here was noticing um, some of the awful things that are happening in their life as they're like, huh, hang on a minute, life's shorter than you thought. Yeah, it really is. And the worst one here, as they point out, is like your parents aging. Uh, that just sucks. That just yep. absolutely sucks. But it's uh, it's a fact of life. Life is way shorter than you think. And that's for everyone, not just sinks. But sinks find it much faster because your biology changes much faster as a woman in that regard. Uh, Jordan Peterson also does TikTok. Didn't know about this. But, All right. Um, he, he uploaded this conversation with Chris, Chris Williamson. And it's an interesting one. They, they speak in here of the fact that all society does is lie to women. True. Yeah, uh, that's true. We've been over many an, an example of how women in the modern age are just indoctrinated with nonsense constantly. Uh, not their fault. They're just, they're just given this for some goddamn reason. And the funny example in this one of the lie that's being told, Jordan says that the lie is, nothing will be more important in your life than your career. Obvious lie. It's a lie for everyone. The, the last lie being, nothing should be more important than in your life than your career. What's really funny about that lie and the fact that it's doubly mad is not even men sell this poison to themselves. I don't know any man who's stupid enough to think his career is the most important thing in his life and will be the only th important thing in his life. There will be some men that think that they need to achieve great things, but that won't necessarily be a career. They're like psychopath men who work 70 hours a week on one thing. You know, the kind of like yeah, John will talk about. The they're, they're, they're like the 0.01% of people who end up CEOs. Yeah, and they live mad a people. completely unsustainable lifestyle for any normal person. You and, don't want to emulate these people. And that's like, even to men, that's mad. So the idea you'd sell that to women is like doubly mad and just funny. <laughs> the fact that you'd, you'd think that was true. So selling the literal male psychopath lifestyle to women. But this clip annoyed a lot of uh, sinks. Uh, local sink of a... <laughs> oh, no. This is actually a feminist. I don't know if she's a sink, but I'm, I'm going to take an educated guess. She's uh, incredibly mad about that, and she describes this situation in a different circumstance. We'll play her description of uh, what evil Jordan Peterson has said. Let's play that clip. Because what you consider a lie, we consider freedom of choice. And for the first time in history... Women have the right to choose whether they want a family or a career or neither or both. And also for the first time in history, men have no right to decide that for us. And it drives you bananas. It's just, I'm sorry, the sad music and the fact that you're complaining that you can't boss us around anymore. It's just... And how's that working out for you? Freedom of choice. But it's it's just also not true. It's, it's like this idea, ever since 2010, women have been able to finally work in the workplace. <laughs> no women had jobs before 2010. It's amazing, really. No woman had seen the outside blue skies before 2015. It is, I mean, it's madness. After Anita Sarkeesian saved them all from their chains. Yeah, I mean, Carl spoke about this. It's also madness that people just think, oh yeah, the Victorian time, where no women worked. It's like, no, obviously not. All women worked, except like the la ladies of luxury. For the obvious reason. Like, everyone's starving. <laughs> so, it's, it's just not even true, but whatever. It's uh, it's just, again, this feminist myth of how society progressed, which is women were basically slaves, just like blacks. And then, yep. uh, and then in 1920, they could vote, and then in the uh, 60s, they could go to work. The and, entirety um, of human history has been nothing but sunshine and rainbows for white men, and women have always just been stepped on by them. Just complete low resolution. There are basically three dates in the world they know, and that's it. It's just like, okay, whatever. I'm not even going to engage, but I do find it funny that she's out there, yeah, well, I'm free and miserable. Yeah, but you define freedom as being sold a lie, that the career's most important thing in your life. No one believes that. No, no men believe that. Why should women believe that? Madness. But there's uh, another sink. She's more interesting. She describes the reason she does what she does, because she wants the sex in the city lifestyle. So let's enjoy her reasoning. Let's play the clip. Well, I'm uh, single and child-free in my 40s, so I kind of lived through that exact switch that the original video is talking about. And here's my theory. Now, th there's loads of reasons, of course, but I think sex in the city changed us. I can remember really distinctly in my mid to late 20s, just commenting to my boyfriend at the time that I really aspire to live like Carrie. I'm a, I'm a writer and uh, and the idea of like having my own apartment and affording that kind of fashion and, and that lifestyle, I was like, oh, that's what I dream of. And he was kind of like, where do I fit in? And I was like, oh, you don't. Now, he didn't fit into my future for many, many reasons, but I think that was the first time that it really occurred to me that I aspire to anything other than hoping he would propose or hoping the next guy would propose or whatever it was. And now I live like Carrie. I find this utterly childish. 
It's it's really funny to me that someone would sit there when they're young and looking at like the meme lifestyle of, of what could be great for you from that age. And you think, oh, that's fantastic. I mean, if you take young men and make them think of the perfect life in the same way she's sitting there and being like, wouldn't it be great to be in the New York City high rises <laughs> I mean, and wearing John, on fashion? John points out she's drinking in the middle of the day as well. So, yeah. Just... I mean, if that was a real drink, she might just be trying to sell the lifestyle. But it's also just like, you'll find this in other shows uh, with men, not just women. It's just like, oh, wouldn't it be funny to be this? And, and when you're young, that's kind of entertaining. Ryan Gosling is literally me. I take like, um, I don't know, uh, Barney from, from How I Met Your Mother or something. I right? thought you meant from Barney the Purple Dinosaur, but carry on. No, him too. But uh... <laughs> I always wanted to be Barney when I grew up. But you know how he's, he's got like uh, the perfect bachelor life as it's presented in the show, but you wouldn't want his life. No, of course I mean, you When you think about it for more than five seconds, you're like, the hell with that. And well, she's I mean, fell for the meme, I mean, the left-wing version of that. What she was talking about, the benefits of her own life that she was describing there, was purely material. I want to be able to live in an apartment, because that's the height of luxury in her eyes. I want to be able to afford all of the fashion. <laughs> oh boy, an apartment. <laughs> yeah, wow. I want to afford the fashion that I want to wear, and be able to drink in the middle of the day, and basically just fill my life with lots of meaningless bollocks that yeah. doesn't actually do anything for me it's till like, the day I eventually die. It's like if I was 11 and you asked me what would my perfect future be like and I'd be like, I could buy all the toys I want. Could buy all the army men, could buy all the train sets. Oh yeah. Like, could get the biggest scale electric track that's ever been constructed. Like that's quite cute when you're 11, but when you're sort of 40... Spin. And you're there with your gigantic <laughs> mansion-wide scale electric, and you're going, I've got no I've, one to play with. trains for yards. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of... You, saw, you look at that man and you think... The hell is he doing with his life? Correctly so, but it's just okay. Okay, I the mean, female can... version of that is 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 freedom. Once again, as as a man, you can have a successful life whilst also having a family as well. Sure, you, I... they don't have to be mutually exclusive, which is why it would be weird to choose just one. And, and and not to discount that there is some small percentage of human beings that will choose the train set or the Sex in the City lifestyle. As we went over, there was about five percent. These are called autists. Uh, yeah, there's there's that too. But the uh, getting back to the sinks, because the the lady from earlier, she's got sink pride worldwide. Um, let's enjoy this cancer. Let's play this. Going to a film house alone is peak elder millennial sink where I can be my true sink self with my sinky film house coffee sinktastic reclining chair and the cleanest, sinkiest crumb free carpet. Too many sinks. No, no, I haven't. It. Are they, are they already, have we already created the insult and they're already trying to reclaim it? Yes. It's not working. Uh, well, no, they can they can do that. That's fine. I mean, if you call yourself a sink, you sound like you're dunking on yourself. There are there are some other like terms that have been used in this sphere. I found the child free movement is a whole other thing. I don't think this is cool. This is this isn't really descriptive as well of anything. This this is like an interview with a lady who's in her twenties. Doesn't getting... have the blunt force trauma of sink. What? No, no. It's not really about an insult. It's more like describing the situation accurately. Like the term incel happens to also be an insult and a great one but it does describe the situation accurately. Uh, the child-free movement is just kind of insanity. So this lady's 28, she's getting her tubes tied. She's not freezing any of her eggs either. Her reasoning is that, well, someone says, well, aren't you going to re maybe regret it, and then you'd feel stupid? And she says, yeah, well, if you have a kid, you might regret it and then feel stupid. <laughs> so that's not... It's not really the same. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> you know, you I could, mean, suppose so. It's almost like there are ways of not getting pregnant. And the kid could turn out to be Ted Bundy, point two, so, you know, maybe, but unlikely. Yeah, they, I mean, this doesn't look like... I, I mean, the sink people are interesting. The, these people aren't interesting, the child-free movement. They just kind of seem... I don't know, like, they're all high on speed or something. There's, there's uh, other women who... Uh, there's one woman here who's uh, sink. She's just talking about the grief of not being able to have kids, and she always wanted kids. That's, that's interesting. She's got some... I mean, that's just sad. No, no, but she's... Uh, it, it gives you, like, a nice insight. Like, she's a sincere person who's trying to explain something, which is cool. But if we uh, go to the next one, there are some posters who spend their time celebrating being 30s with no kids. I've seen this a lot. This is various places. Uh, this one's really kind of weird. Like, her and her boyfriend are dancing with their... Um, what do you call it? Fluff fluff babies or something? I heard a lot of times. I think they're called cats. Yeah. Um, there's, there's that. I've seen What's he various doing? posts about this. This individual, so though, cringe. I found funny, though, because they posted this, and then like, a year later, you want to know what they were posting? Baby pictures? Basically. She paid out the ass for IVF because it's expensive as hell. No one seems to think about that. Well, yeah. And uh, it worked, thankfully. I mean, we've spoken... I mean, you know what? Good for it her. It doesn't always work. At least she managed to change her mind and get the procedure just in time for it to be able to work. Well, what I find funny is that she went from being like, yeah, I'm single, to endlessly, it's just baby posting now. <laughs> just constantly, like, prego posting. Honestly, <laughs> this is the happy ending. 
I don't know. This is the incredibly unlikely happy ending, even though she's still posting about it on TikTok when really she shouldn't be. I'm not saying happy or... or, or, Sorry, I'm trying to assess. It's just funny to me, but we'll we'll start with the the last one here because there's some femme poster who's talking about how this is uh, good because it's ruffling conservative feathers. Um, This is my favorite. (laughs) This is my absolute favorite. All right, all right. Because she quotes white feminism and uh, very aptly recognizes as to why that 30% gap might be appearing in the West. Let's play. Child free by choice movement is gaining momentum and ruffling some conservative feathers. And I am here for it. I am not child free, but I'm of an opinion that it's kind of like a face tattoo. You definitely want to be sold on the idea. So I want to share a quote that I wrote wrote, um, last year when I was reading this book. The name of the book is White Feminism by Koa Beck. It's a brilliant book. But here's the quote. With the absence of a subsidized childcare, paid federal parental leave, and rampant pregnancy discrimination, young women who have had class advantages are left to ask themselves if they want to effectively lose them. Because that's what parenthood in the U.S. will ultimately entail. If they want to partake in a different kind of labor that will offer them fewer legal protections, limited pay, increased hours, increased personal financial burdens, and with zero support from the institutions to which they have dedicated expanding days and increased workloads. In its increasing neoliberal cultural terrain where everyone is encouraged to optimize themselves for the best employment, the strongest partnership, the most successful path, what strategically middle-class, somewhat self-aware woman wants to do more work for less money? The pragmatics of having a baby are fundamentally incompatible with the dominant cultural messages surrounding economic security, class ascension, and performance aid aimed at women. I couldn't have put it better myself. So, yeah, there you go. It's the biggest self-report. She doesn't even realize it. What does? Wait, but basically, doesn't that say that if you don't have children, you are part of the capitalist system? No. What, also, what I do you, have children, the, so this doesn't apply to me anyway. Also, this book is derogatorily called white feminism, which means the author hates me already because I'm no, a white the, feminist. The white feminist author over there is laying out that women used to have as a as a I don't know race because this is how these people view the world. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. So. Uh, used to have gendered privileges that far extended what they have now, and they were traded in exchange for political differences, now that women are instead considered basically just citizen. You are the same as male citizen as well, and therefore can be asked to perform the same goals, in which case you are not given any gendered privileges that you used to have. There are still some, don't get me wrong, or you can talk about the courts and everything else another time, but the white feminist there is like, we used to have way more, and now we don't, because we're now in this... This, uh, well, that's 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 what I mean. <laughs> Neoliberal she, world where only thing that matters is our careers. Yeah, she read out a passage which hmm. basically says you're now part of the capitalist system. Yes. Gr- <laughs> what did she think she was reading? <laughs> I just find that really funny when she's like, "Oh, this is a great, great onus." No, that's a self-report, love. But whatever. Um, of course, having a career can be highly desirable. Uh, not being dependent on men who can't be depended on is also definitely real, and is now, as the white feminist there pointed out, supported by the state and not punished, which is a change that was demanded by feminists, and um, you can argue about that till the cows come home. But saying that there should be nothing more important to people than their careers is an obvious lie, and it's unfairly true for women more than men because of biological clocks. But sink cope is not convincing. I'm not buying onto it, but sinks are definitely real and something that I find incredibly funny, Uh, not just because it's a weird mirror image to the incel movement in a way, and finally we found it, it's also the fact that I can't get over, as we laughed at earlier, her sitting there being like, damn, I have to pay for things. <laughs> <laughs> She's just, I, I'm never going to stop laughing at that. But there we are, sinks. Now we know them. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the premium hangouts this episode on how do we save England. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.